Spring will be here before we know it. And if you're a commercial landscape contractor, I'm excited to share an upcoming event to help you get ready for springtime. On January 14th, I'll be the keynote speaker at Kubota USA's virtual event, Turf Talk, Tips to Thrive in 2021. I'll be speaking with a few other people, including Tom Vockel, the Senior Turf Product Manager, and Ken Ahrens, the National Sales Manager from Echo Incorporated. And in today's podcast episode, I interview Tom and Ken with some of their tips for getting ready for the springtime, some trends that they're seeing in the industry right now, and overall a great conversation about how to gear up for spring. My name's Jack Jostis, and welcome to the Landscaper's Guide to Modern Sales and Marketing podcast. This show is all about helping landscape contractors increase your profit and enjoy a better lifestyle as a result of sales and marketing. In today's episode, we're going to help you dial in your business ahead of springtime with our special guest. So let's get started. We weren't getting the leads that I knew we could. We weren't getting the right leads. What started happening is that our, our leads are more qualified. Our sales have probably gone up by about 10 to 15% a year. We're going to increase our sales volume by a million dollars in a year. All right, everyone, we are here with Ken Ahrens, National Sales Manager from Echo Incorporated, and Tom Vockel, the Senior Turf Project Manager from Kubota USA. And the three of us are going to be speaking at an exciting event on January 14th. It's called Turf Talk, Tips to Thrive in 2021. And you can register for that event at kubotausa.com slash turf talk. And today I wanted to talk with Ken and Tom about some things that you can do to get ready for springtime and also some trends, some things that are changing um, in this weird time, right? I mean, it's it's what, a, what an unusual time just in the world, but certainly in the green industry and some of the opportunities that's created. So um, Ken, uh, tell us, uh, introduce yourself. Who are you? What do you do? Yeah, I'm uh, Ken Aarons with Echo Incorporated, the national sales manager. And, you know, it's been um, uh, over the last few years, there's always trends in our in our industry. Um, clearly, the trend uh, this year has changed uh, dramatically for everyone. Um, the working conditions have changed and the clientele uh, requirements are changing as well. Um, I think that uh, really our industry is is able to capitalize on a lot of the opportunities that are presenting themselves in times like this where people are spending more time in outside spaces um, and they want those properties to be in pristine condition so that they can enjoy them with their families. Uh, some of the things that that we're seeing uh, really this year is the diversification of the services that landscape companies are um, presenting to their clientele, be it commercial um, or residential type properties. And uh, there's, there's a lot of opportunities out there in different categories of the industry, um, hardscaping, uh, you know, leaf cleanup, especially going on right now. There's a lot of aeration going on, overseeding, things like that, um, where you can really stretch your business uh, out and, and kind of capture more of your customers' attention by being more diversified. And for uh, the people listening who have been you know, maybe offering, uh, you know, lawn mowing, lawn maintenance services, and they're starting to break into offering other, other services. What, what tips would you have from an account management standpoint of how to introduce those services to your existing customer base? How can you, cause that's usually the, one of the best sources, right? Is to upsell or offer your, your existing clients, the new services that you're offering. What are some ways that you're seeing is working for that? Yeah, sure. I, well, I think, first of all, it's really important that you stay focused on what you do best. Um, and if you do a really good job for your customers, they'll start asking you questions of maybe some things that they need done <clears throat> and what you're typically offering. Um, and I would go with what are they asking for mostly? Um, is it, you know, the overseeding and the aeration in the fall or is it leaf cleanup? Um, those are some of the best ways. Your customers are really your best advertisement out there. And if you're doing uh, or offering things that they, they are looking for, um, that's how you can start to grow. And I would say, you know, don't try to get into something that, that you haven't learned as a skill. Um, you can learn that over time. But if there's something that you can take and, and purchase tools uh, from our industry to be able to perform that job at a high level, 
uh, and do uh, great work, I think that's something that you should explore and, and start to offer. Um, it just expands your importance to, to your clientele. A- absolutely, Ken. Yeah. And I think what you said is, is on point of, you know, focusing on what you do best. I think what you said, Ken, is, is on point where, you know, you want to focus on what you do best. You don't want to oversell something you can't do. And um, as you build up those new skills, your existing customer base is absolutely uh, the first people you should offer it to. One of the things that we featured on the podcast recently was a story of a commercial contractor who was trying to upsell a bigger project and they had done the work, they had the skills in-house, it was a repeat client, but when that repeat client went and looked at their website, they didn't see any information about those services. They didn't see any portfolio pictures or testimonials or the things that you know people want to see. They want reassurance that yes, you can do this. And so at the Turf Talk, we're going to be talking about what a commercial clients actually want to see on your website. And one of them is if you're going to upsell them things, they're absolutely going to want to see that information. Well, one of the things I'd like to just say on to kind of piggyback with what Ken is saying is we have seen a lot of people expanding their business. For example, they want to become the one-stop shop for that particular customer. So if it's like he mentioned, leaf cleanup or other things, trimming trees, that's another one we see in in the Texas area where, you know, if there's another truck at your customer, find out what they're doing and see if there's a way that you might be able to learn that task and be able to do a nice job at that as well. And then, you know, when they have a need, you're, you're fulfilling all of that need that I just, that's really, I think a thing that, you know, much like what we feel like with customers looking at things, you know, I think the end customer looks at the same way. If they can just deal with one person instead of three, I think it's a win-win for them. And, and I think it can be a win-win for the commercial landscaper that opens up uh, some of their things. Yeah. And, you know, one, one of the ways to, to add those additional skills is to train up. You could train up your existing people. You could hire new people. Another way of growing is absolutely acquiring other companies. What are you guys seeing in, in the commercial industry right now? Are you seeing acquisitions happening? Are they taking place where uh, larger commercial companies are acquiring maybe smaller companies so that way they can expand those services? I think there has been a lot of that consolidation in, in many areas around the country. Uh, some maybe a little bit more than others, but uh, the one thing that we do see is, is a lot of that. And I do think you're right. It, it's basically one way for some to expand their customer base. So, you know, the combined company does, you know, twice as much, if you will. So, you know, they become larger and larger that we've seen a lot of that occurring in, in some of the people that we deal directly with. And and what are what are some of the ways that Kubota helps people? Tell us a little bit about your fleet program and how landscape companies, while they're trying to grow and expand, there's there's a bit of capital required to, you know, offer the machinery, have the equipment in order to do these these additional services. How does Kubota help people with their fleet program? Yeah, we have some great fleet programs. We've worked with a lot of both dealers and end users to develop our programs. And and basically, it's a program that, you know, the more you buy over time, the, the better discounts you're going to get. And, you know, we're all about trying to get, you know, as a landscaper, they would be trying to get the best value for their dollar. And that's what we're out there trying to do as well, where we give them discounts on accessories and parts and different things you know, as being a member of the fleet program and and buying under the fleet program. Another nice benefit that that does is it allows you to buy at that level for uh, years in the future. So it's really, once you get into the fleet program, you can stay in the fleet program and continue buying in that fleet program and you're getting the best discounts out there available. And and how do people get involved in the fleet program? Do they they need to apply? Do they need to have a purchase a certain level to qualify? What, how do you how do you get in? Right. Well, well, basically on our program, we, we kind of have a two-tiered approach. I mean, someone walking in 
wanting to buy just one piece of equipment that's a commercial landscaper can get a, a starting level discount. But obviously the guy that has 10 pieces of equipment and buys four or five pieces at a time gets a little different level of a discount. Mm-hmm. So our, our fleet program is, is very comprehensive from that standpoint, meaning that if you're going to buy one piece, you can get a, a, a special discount. Uh, if you buy other pieces, you get more discount. And like I mentioned, if you start off with the one piece and you continue to buy, you're going to get increase your discounts over the more units, the Kubota units that you uh, purchase over time. Great. Great. And, and, you know, one of the things that we were, we were talking about before we started recording this podcast episode was how, if anything this year and everything that's changed has in many ways created more demand for, <clears throat> for landscaping, not only for residential, but also for commercial. I'm going to share my screen here and show you there's a tool that we use Anyone can check this out. It's called Google Trends. And what this shows is over the last five years, uh, the the searches in the United States for commercial landscaping. And you can see that there's a there's a um, you know a peak. It's 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 coming up, it's pretty high. And one of the things that we're gonna talk about at the turf talk is that yes, even commercial clients are are looking for you on Google and what what words you need to include on your website so you actually show up. So uh, for those of you listening, you gotta make sure you join us at kabotausa.com slash turf talk. And you know, aside from an increase in demand, um, there have been challenges um, in, in the green industry faced by all the closures of things, um, remote working, what are what are some 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 things that you're seeing changing, and how are businesses, in particular in the commercial industry, adapting, whether from a remote work standpoint, communication? What are you what what are you seeing that's working? Yeah, so I think uh, one of the things that that we've really noticed is um, the amount of people that uh, spend time and get educated, um, you know, via the internet on products, you know, before they shop. So. Um, you know, a lot of the customers that are coming into our dealers now, they're they're very well versed. And uh, most of them, especially from a commercial landscape perspective, these guys are professionals. They use these products every day. Um, they know the little um, things in each product that, that make them uh, want to have that piece of product to uh, to complete their jobs. And so um, I think the, one of the biggest challenges that we see is to make sure that that our dealers are out there and that they are. Um, uh, reaching those customers, you know, just like we're doing today, something very different than we would have done even, you know, last year. Uh, we would be in person at, uh, at uh, GIE Expo or maybe the Tree Industry Care Show and talking to our customers face to face. And so um, while it's presented challenges, I think a lot of the services are essential. Um, we're considered essential business and we're fortunate enough to um, to still be able to get out um, and do the work. Um, clearly, some of the challenges, I'm sure the commercial Landscapers would always tell you is um, finding people that that want to do that work um, and and be an employee in a company um, that goes out day in and day out and does that does that hard work. Yeah, well, so I think what what you're sharing is that is something that we're experiencing ac- across really all industries is that what people used to do in person they're now doing more of online, whether it's researching products or researching the people they're going to hire. And, and you've got to have a strong internet presence. You've got to have video content. I believe even if you're a commercial landscape contractor, people are going to do more research online. And so what, what people used to rely on their in-person selling skills may now be happening. It's happening online. It may be happening over a Zoom meeting, Absolutely. different things like this. And so um, the, the note about you know land, landscaping jobs that I wanted to share is, uh, I'll, I'll reference this Google Trends tool again, is that there's a, a big increase in the, the number of people finding landscaping jobs online. And so if you look for, you know, people looking for landscaping jobs near me, I'm going to share my screen again. <clears throat> this is people you can see over the last 12 years, you know, 10 years ago, hardly anybody looked for landscaping jobs near me. This spring, last spring, you know, it's it's for several years, it's doubled year over year. People looking on their smartphone for landscaping jobs. 
And just like a customer would look online and, and wonder, well, what's it like to work there? What kind of reviews do they have? Does it look like a credible company? Employees are doing the same thing. And at the Turf Talk, we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do to stand out from a recruiting standpoint. Um, Tom, tell us, what, what are some of the things that the commercial landscapers who are listening, that what can they do to get ready for spring? How can people have a, a really just smooth start to what I'm expecting to be a pretty demanding and challenging year because there's so much more demand. People are working longer hours. They're running the machines harder. What can we do to get ready for the springtime? Absolutely. I think one of the things that, that the commercial landscaper needs to do is to make sure they're ready for spring is to make sure all of their equipment is tuned up, ready to go. Uh, make sure they have uh, uh, fresh oil in them in the engines and then the hydro drives and the different things that they need to maintenance year over year. And those those key elements, if they're taking care of those things, they're taking care of the really the, the inner piece of the landscape equipment, if you will, uh, making sure they have uh, good sets of cutting blades ready to go so they can go in and out so they, they don't have a lot of downtime. Check their belts on the equipment. You know, if they are uh, needing belts or blades, you know, go see your dealer now. When the dealer has a little bit more downtime, it's easier to get in and out. Uh, make sure you have the right things you need uh, as you get ready for spring. It's just basically, you know, have everything sitting in the shop ready to go, much like uh, the guy right now uh, in various parts of the country with their snow equipment. You know, all their snow equipment's poised, ready to go. When that snow flies, when the ice hits, everybody's ready to go. And that's how you want to be set up for spring. And, you know, we're, we're obviously we've encouraged and put the word out to our dealers as well. And, you know, our dealers stock up this time of year also to offer uh, great incentives for people coming in, buying blades, buying belts, buying the, the parts they're going to need for the next season. So it, it's, you know, it, we want to be ahead of the season. We want to have their equipment ready to go. Uh, we, you know, we want to make them successful as well. Encourage that success. Great. Well, um, why should we come see you guys speak on the 14th? What are you going to be talking about? Tell us a little bit about, uh, I'm going to be talking, of course, about digital marketing and sales at the at the Turf Talk. Uh, tell us briefly, what will you guys be talking about? Well, we're going to be talking a little bit about one of our customers who's who had some really great success uh, in, in the last uh, 10 or 12 years with growing their business. And, and uh, one nice thing is, is they've grown with Kubota. They've done different things. So you can hear them talk firsthand at, uh, at our event on the 14th. And I want to put a special thing in there as well. If uh, everyone on there registers by the 6th of uh, January, you're going to register for a, a prize pack that we're going to be giving out. We're going to be giving out uh, 30 different prize packages to uh, uh, to the listeners that participate and, and come and attend the event. And I wanted to just make that point out there. It's not a hard deadline. It's just a deadline for the goods, if you will. But, you know, we were going to talk to that customer about some things and share some things with them as he, you know, talks about, you know, what are the things that he does in getting ready for spring as well. So that we're, we're, we're uh, proud to be associated with him. He's a, a very good uh, a, a very good customer and a very good uh, landscaper. And, and I think the one thing when you see it, he may have some videos that we end up putting on the site at, at the, out there, but uh, his calling card is really the quality of work he does. And that's one of the other things I like to stress that, you know, I think the guys that really are doing well uh, run that way. You know, their, yeah. their best calling card is the, the work that they leave when they pull away of their truck and trailer, if you will. Yeah, he really does quality work and uh, will be exciting during the, the Q&A. We're actually going to do a live review of his website. So make sure you show up yeah. to this event and see you learn some things that he's doing well, some things to improve. It should be a real blast. And Ken, what will you be speaking about? Yeah, so uh, a little bit about pro just some products, um, not necessarily specific products, but categories of products. We have a a series of professional products uh, that we came out with at Echo called X-Series products. So I'll touch on that a little bit and the importance of, of those products to professional landscapers. And then talk about our programs. Uh, Tom touched on the Kubota fleet program. Um, Echo has a fleet program as well. And actually 
uh, is a diverse program that really will fit any size landscaper out there. So um, I'll give the details of that uh, as well during that period of time. And I'm looking forward to talking to everybody. I, I think that uh, one of the things that really uh, stuck out in my mind that was mentioned earlier was getting out early, getting that maintenance done. Um, you know, go to your dealers while, you know, their business is a little slower right now before they're slammed with business. This is the time to get your products tuned up and taken care of and ready for the next season. And building on that relationship with your dealer, you might be able to find products online and, and get educated online, but you still need to have that relationship with your dealer um, and get in and, and uh, give those guys some business over the winter and, and get your products ready to go for, for spring. Yeah, absolutely. Visit your dealer and um, before or after you do that, write a nice Google review for them, right? That's one of the things that you can Absolutely. do to support the businesses that you work with is to proactively write Google reviews for them, LinkedIn recommendations. And um, that's another tip that I have for people to get ready for the spring is to get Google reviews. A lot, a lot of times, you know, people are so focused um, during the season doing work that they forget to ask for reviews. Fall and winter can be a good time to reach out Make sure your review average. Google yourself. I, I was meeting with uh, a client recently, and they're ranking really well on Google. Their website's doing well. And the, the one piece that's missing, though, is they have a three-star average. And I don't know about you guys, but I never buy a three-star average anything, right? <laughs> when was the last time you went to Amazon and said, right. you know what? Let Just show me the three-star and below options, right? <laughs> right? Business owners are the same way. If you're selling commercial services, they want the best. They want the best value. And online reviews is is part of that. Well, thank you both so much for sharing on, on the show today. And for those of you listening, uh, join us on January 14th for Turf Talk. Register online at KubotaUSA.com slash Turf Talk. And if you register before the 6th, we have an awesome prize pack. Uh, I will be the keynote speaker at this event. I'll also be transitioning some of the speakers and things. We're going to do a live website review and Q&A. We've got a ton of bonuses and things that we're going to be giving away. Uh, so join us again, kabotausa.com slash turf talk. Ken, Tom, thank you so much for being on the show today. And I can't wait to see you guys in Dallas uh, in January. Sounds great. Thanks, Jack. Great. Thank you. As a result of increasing your profit, this is so... Man, I got to do another take. Man!